So I just want to announce uh, the latest news. Uh, the leader of the Russian Liberal Democrats, Vladimir uh, Zirnovovsky, sorry, my, my Russian is horrible. <laughs> uh, but the Russian Liberal Democrat, he had just announced just uh, February 26th that he wants to be cloned and that we should start this cloning of people and that we should make up a list of people to be cloned, such as Einstein. And then he lists off another list of Russians that I've never heard of. Uh, but he wanted to, he said he personally would be happy to be cloned. And this is somewhere where we're at in our world, where we're looking at mind transfer technology and cloning coming to the forefold along with time travel because we have the Anderson Institute and Dr. Anderson coming out, please listen to me, we can time travel. You know, he has a full institute that uh, does nothing but time travel, the Anderson Institute, and he wants the world to know that we're all in danger because now we can rewrite timelines. Uh, so we're looking at cloning, t mind transfer technology, and uh, time travel all at once, and the world's not ready for that at all. Uh, but it has played into our reality already in so many ways, and no one knows it except unless you come over to freemantv.com and check out what I'm saying. Because I've been tracking it as if this were real. And as I have, I just keep hitting it on the head, and I'm blowing my own mind with the whole idea of Obama being a clone of Akhenaten, the idea of the mind transfer technology, the coupling with the idea of in Avatar that they needed the particular gene, you know, they needed a particular DNA, which is an antenna, to transmit to the proper Avatar. That's uh, the whole story in uh, Avatar, the movie. James Cameron, definitely deep inside, working with Disney and whatnot. But so we're we're at this point where if you look at Obama as Akhenaten, then therefore his DNA is a particular frequency antenna to receive a, a particular entity. You know, and on top of all of this, it's all very strange. Uh, I don't know if you've gotten into the bust of Michael Jackson and Michael Jackson's whole death and how he had set, uh, uh, set up a roboticist to build him a robot to receive his soul. Now, I have this on film. I have the scientists talking about it. It's not conjecture. Michael Jackson asked a roboticist to build him a robot to receive his soul. He thought much about his death from, you know, being married to Marie Presley and worrying about Elvis's death to, uh, his other connections uh, with uh, Princess Diana and worrying about his death. So he was thinking about this heavily. Well, the moment Michael Jackson dies, there's all kinds of mysteries around that. There's the movement of the body in the middle of the night. There's the missing brain. There's the second pathologist. There's the announcement by the Jackson family that the Illuminati had conspired to kill him. And then you find that Michael had all his own thoughts about what he was going to do when he died, even buying a solid gold replica of King Tutankhamun's sarcophagus, uh, but when asked if he was going to be buried in that, he said, no, I'm going to live forever <laughs> in his usual Michael tone. Well, it, one month after he died, all of a sudden in the Chicago Museum, people started noticing this bust that they never noticed before. And it is the spitting image of Michael Jackson. You can see it on my website. You go to freemantv.com, check it out. Uh, you will see that it is the spitting image. I mean, just like Obama and Akhenaten, and Michelle and, and Queen T and the rest, uh, Michael Jackson is this ancient pharaoh. Uh, did he transfer himself back in time? I mean, this guy had hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, we have to now start to ask these kind of questions, and the proof <laughs> keeps showing up. That's the crazy part. Well, that's bizarre, isn't it? I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying here because no one noticed the bus until after he died. Exactly. That's As if we were a new, new timeline, and the only difference <laughs> was that there's this now new pharaoh that no one knows who the pharaoh was, and most think it was a woman because of the facial features, but <laughs> you put Michael Jackson's face on it, and you might still think it's a woman. But yeah, look at Michael Jackson's kids. Okay, Blanket. He was born of a surrogate mother. No one even knows who the mother and father of Blanket are. The woman that gave birth to Blanket is not the mother of the baby, right? So they're, you know, look at Michael Jackson's kids. They're white, okay? <laughs> you know, the, they were all surrogate babies. There was no uh, sex involved. This was all just in vitro uh, fertilization, and the, the, we don't even know who the parents are. Yeah, very, very interesting topic, Freeman, very <laughs> this stuff blows my mind, Max. I, you know, this is where I'm at. I'm sitting back just watching this unfold before me. As we were talking about symbolic gestures and the nature of language, 
how I knew that Obama would end the NASA space program as they started to call it Ares, the god of war. So I said, yeah, wartime space program, but we're not going to see Ares rise. We're going to see SpaceX with their Falcon and their Dragon rise. And what is standing up at Cape Canaveral right now but the Falcon rocket ready to launch the Dragons into space just after the Atlantis. You know, you got to start taking this stuff in. Yeah, I realize where we're at. NASA's putting a brand new antenna array up in Canberra in Australia, where we're seeing really strange effects going on in satellite relay. Oh, yeah, there's been some really bizarre stuff up over northern Western Australia and over Bass Strait and another one up over Brisbane. Yeah, it's been pretty bizarre. I think there was another one over Perth as well that I caught, another strange-looking shape over Perth. So it's been like four of them now. So, so consider that these... Antenna arrays have been used to say uh, the ISCAT in, in Sweden was used to send uh, a Doritos commercial to Ursa Major. Or when <laughs> the day the Earth stood still came out, they transmitted it to uh, Alpha Centauri as a simulcast. Of course, it would take four years to get there. But they simulcast the day the Earth stood still to Alpha Centauri. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, yeah, I have. The whole message, humanity will never change, just go ahead and kill us. Right. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bizarre, isn't it? Yes. But that's the thing. Now, this is the great mystery, and what you had uncovered with the idea of the, all of this being mental, is that we have been strayed away from synchronicity. Money is a path to take away your own divine power. Now you no longer look for these miracles to enter your life. You now seek a, a costume at McDonald's so that you can slave away for some piece of paper. Uh, oh, even absolutely. The open, Absolutely. I've been, I address this on so many shows that money is simply a talisman for control. Money is what is used to keep people into this, this state of shortage, this state of need. It's what locks them into this reality. We don't need it. It doesn't actually exist. It's just paper. And we've been taught that we need to collect this stuff and pass it around to each other in order to be able to pay to live in the country we were born in. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely absurd. It is, absolutely, and it's a magic spell, and it was laid there by the Templars, who are you know, deep into the occult with the assassins or the Hashim, and you can find that you, you go open any ancient grimoire, look into Kim, King Solomon's magic, and you'll immediately see a, a talisman that's identical to the one on the back of the dollar bill with the two seals and a binding agent in the middle. This is common magic. This isn't even extravagant magic. Um, but what we see is that the human nature does have this power of, mirac of the miraculous. We are all angels. And we then carry forward the, the spirit of another. And what has happened is we've all become isolated in this psychotic world where you don't even see a human behind the register. You know, that's just somebody that's asking you if you want plastic or paper. They're not human. You don't interact. And there, you know, we believe in this whole psychosis of, of the hierarchy and all of that. And we, it's amazing what humans can be, you know, controlled so easily. But what I've learned through my years of experience of wandering the earth as some sort of, you know, little shaman, I guess, uh, is that the universe provides and opens up potentials that you could have never, ever even considered so that you don't even know what you're possible of. Or what's you know what life is waiting out there for you, but everyone's afraid. And I personally believe that the the answer to our problem is block parties. I think the more people get together and meet one another, the less uh, we feel this well mind control that's over all of us through the propaganda. Yeah, absolutely. Divide and conquer. That's the way it's been done. I make sure I interact with everybody. That, that's what I've been saying. Everybody looks at the system and. and Everybody wants to know who the controlling hand is, and there's all sorts of speculation. I mean, well, as like we were saying the other day, Freeman, we could we could talk for the next millennia, and all, you know, all, the, all we can ultimately do is speculate. You know, there's all sorts of ideas, and there's all sorts of information and evidence to point in whichever direction you want to go. Really, I mean, there are so many possibilities, but ultimately, the way you defeat the system itself is by understanding that we are the system. We are kept divided from each other. And so this is what makes the system function. If we can simply break down these barriers between each other and connect with each other and start doing the right thing and all that we do, everybody just, just do the right thing all the time. You're not going to be profiting from people. You're not going to be hurting other people. There's not going to be anyone homeless because we'll build them a house. I mean, there's no reason for anyone to be homeless. You know, we get rid of money, start helping each other, and the whole world would change in three seconds. 
people have to understand what money actually is. All it is is, is a talisman for control used to keep people in a state of shortage. And eventually, everything you own will be transferred into the hands of somebody else. And you will have been bred to think this is okay because you think it's okay to live in a profit-based society. And it just doesn't work. It's, it's ultimately designed to fail. And all we need to do, mate, is connect with each other. I really believe that. That's, that's the solution to it all. It really is. And what has been engendered right now, since especially uh, 2000, is what I call the age of the dark hero. And this is that sense of justice that comes from murder. <laughs> and you can see it in everything they place on us and everything they teach us from uh, V for Vedetta and, and all the way back to, well, when you look at, at 2000, what had happened in our symbolic gesture, and you better realize that your comic books, your movies, your, all your entertainment, even the, the you know, grocery store um, magazines, they're all there to program you. <laughs> 